Well, hello everyone. This is Dr. Eileen, and this is another Daily Dose of Medicine Walk. And we got our MCAT Luna right here. And Sam is off laying in the sun and getting a little bit of relaxation and fresh air out there. Probably at some point Luna will want to go and hang out. And um, I hope everyone's doing well. I hope everyone is nurturing themselves and really considering, you know, their feelings and what's going on. And bye-bye. And I also hope that people are nurturing their inner child. And that was a phrase that like back in the 70s, you know, there was the whole concept of, you know, the inner child. And really, it is a, a very important part of taking care of ourselves and identifying everything that is affecting us through the perspective of, you know, that idea that each and every one of us have that part of ourselves that remained a child and still interacts with the world the way that a child does, including being afraid, including, you know, wanting something that may not be very good for them or, you know, really getting, you know, getting very frustrated and very angry and even throwing tantrums. So today we're going to take a look at the inner child and how that child can be especially tricky to manage when you're empathic. Because keep in mind, your inner child is an empath as well. And as we grew up and as we heard things like, well, you're just too dramatic. You're just, um, you're, you have too much imagination. You're making things up. You know, why are you worried about somebody else's business? You know, all of those things. Well, you know, as our bodies grew and our, an aspect of our minds grew, there was also a part of us that remained that little child who just wanted to be believed, who just wanted to be supported, who really didn't understand why they were feeling things as intensely as they do. And if you deal with an empathic child, I would suggest that you go check out the video where I talked about, you know, dealing with empathic children and how to best support them, as well as the empathic teenager. But right now we're talking more about our emotional inner child and the idea that that child is still carrying the baggage that we grew up with about being empaths. So that child, you know, has a very difficult time, you know, being able to, you know, manage and, and put into perspective, into an adult perspective, what it is that we experience. And, you know, it can be hard. And, you know, when people say, even to an adult empath, oh, well, you're just being dramatic. You've always been so dramatic. It goes right into, you know, that little kid. And sometimes we feel like that little kid again. And it's important that that child and, and viewing that child as almost like its own consciousness. When you think, what is, what is my inner child needing right now? If I'm, you know, afraid, is there something clear for me to be afraid of? Or is, is there something that is, is triggering me on the inside where I don't feel safe and it's that little one inside of you who does not feel safe and needs reassurance and we can reassure ourselves which is one of the coolest things about being empathic is we can turn it inward there is nothing to say that you cannot resonate with yourself with that aspect of yourself to understand what am I feeling right now? And you can resonate with you as easily as you can resonate with someone else. So when we turn empathy inward, when we take a look at where we're at, uh, often it can be tremendously revealing if we can just take a step back and go, okay, I know I'm feeling a lot, and especially right now because there is so much intense, intense emotion in the energetic field and the idea that, you know, we're just kind of, you know, doing our best to, you know, keep ourselves centered, to find that eye of the storm so that that way, you know, we can at least catch our breath and be able to deal with all of the intense energy that's around us. Well, 
Sometimes our inner child needs to have that explained. Sometimes we need to quiet ourselves down, identify that part within ourselves that is so scared. Picture that part of you as a child who is frightened. Now, how would you react to a child who's frightened? You know, unfortunately, in many cases, that inner child gets pushed to side and gets, you know, it's like, okay, well, I've got things to do. I've got to be a grown up. I, can't, I don't have time to be afraid. I don't have time to wish that, you know, all the badness would go away. I don't have time to take a moment to do something fun that makes me smile. You know, often that child does get pushed aside and it's sad because that child is probably one of the biggest parts of why we are what we are, that, that innocence, that, that youthful way of being able to look at all of the world, knowing you're connected to it, because there are some tremendously beautiful moments when you're empathic and when you can feel everything. And it is wonderful. And that inner child loves that. And then the yucky stuff kind of comes in. And sometimes we do need to set aside the fact that it's like, okay, I know I'm grown and I know I'm old and I know that, you know, as a grown up, I'm supposed to view the world in a particular way. And the empathic child inside of you doesn't, you know, doesn't agree with that. They never signed on to being a grown up. And so there's always a part, there's a part of all of us that remains that child and how that child has been treated and how we treat that child will determine whether or not your empathy will be able to flow smoothly and whether or not you will be able to create uh, autonomy from your empathy where you have choice. So let's talk about that a little bit because, you know, we all have that kid inside us. You know, when was the last time you rode on a swing? When was the last time, you know, you closed your eyes when the wind was blowing really hard and, you know, and pictured yourself flying? When was the last time you sat down and ate a bowl of cereal and watched cartoons? When was the last time you wished on a star? When was the last time you played with a toy or played a game? And when was the last time that you gave yourself kind of an internal hug? For me, I picture that child. I picture the little girl. And if something is going on, I can feel her aggravation. I can feel her fear. And I come to her, the, the adult me goes to her and is able to, you know, provide comfort and provide boundaries and, you know, to un tell her that, you know, I understand, I know it's scary and it's okay. I've got this. Or when I've got stuff I need to do and that child doesn't feel like it, I can go to that part of myself and say, you know what? I know you want to go play and we just have a few things to take care of, but I promise we will have a chance to go have some fun. And it may sound silly and it may sound goofy and it may even sound a little crazy. And if you can identify that part of you that is vulnerable, that feels vulnerable, then you can be able to bring calm to not only to that part of you, but you will also allow a very peaceful ability to utilize your empathy and not feel like it's out of control because it's that inner child who is very susceptible to feeling that things are out of control, that things are not safe. And any empath who has ever been overwhelmed by emotions around them or by energy knows what that feels like. They know what that out of control feeling feels like. You know, when you are, are just you know, racked with sobs, but you don't know why. When you're terrified and you don't know why or you can't verbalize it. And especially if what you feel and what you perceive has been devalued. You know, all of that goes through the doorway of that child within us. 
which is why it's so much more important. You know, I mean, it's important to nurture that child for everybody. And if you are empathic, you need to nurture that because that inner child, you know, once I was able to, because my inner child didn't trust me for a long time because I always basically suppressed her because I had grown up things to do. Once I learned to create a relationship with my inner child and once I created a cooperative sort of relationship, I found that my ability to access my empathy exponentially increased because it is within that child that, you know, really a huge amount of that power lies, uh, that ability to resonate. When you have balance with all of you, and especially that child, because what a child expresses, you know, is just, it's raw, it's open, it's not, you know, it, it, it's not tempered by anything, like the imagination of a child. You know, back when I was little, I would imagine things and they would seem real. A child can imagine to the point of where they perceive it as reality because they were, they haven't learned yet of all the things that can limit. And that lies within the inner child. So when we can tap into that, when we can find resonance with that part of ourselves and invite that child and all that they carry into, you know, who we are, that means we tap into all of the possibilities that a child carries. So make sure uh, that you are nurturing that part of yourself. Make sure you're acknowledging that part of yourself because, you know, when we acknowledge that we're scared, and I mean, you know, like, oh my gosh, I am so scared. Just by saying the words, it can help relieve it. And realize not all of you is scared. Your, your love is not scared. Certainly your inner courage is not scared. Your higher self is not scared. It's just that fear. And when we can be able to address that fear within ourselves and have the compassion for ourselves that we would for a child who is afraid how we would become gentle with that little one. And we can become that gentle with ourselves. We can connect with that inner child. Because like I said, the ability to increase your ability to resonate, that's a doorway that it comes through, that, that inner little one. Because what that child gives us is the belief in infinite possibility. And that takes away because often people will limit their own empathy because there's that part of them that says it's not real. But the child doesn't have that limitation. The child just feels. And when we can believe in, you know, what is and the potential for what is without worrying, well, you know, but is it real? Is it real? That's not a question that the inner child asks. That's, that's the limiting thing where we worry about what other people think. So celebrate your inner child. Embrace your inner child. Have a play date with your inner child. Because that is the one who is going to help you to reach a much higher level of your empathy. If you're in balance with your inner child and you can tap into that infinite possibility, then... Really, the sky's the limit. So, whether it's going out and treating the that one to an ice cream, or riding on a swing, or watching some cartoons, take time to connect with your inner child. It may seem silly. Worst case scenario, you'll just have some fun. So, Thank you for joining me, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, 
uh, please, you can leave the comments in the comment section. You can be able to um, have, you know, you can reach me through my Twitter page. And you can also reach me through my Facebook group, Medicine Walk with Dr. Eileen. And you can also, um, well, my, oh, my email address is in the description. So thank you for joining me again. And as always, I wish you balance and I wish you blessings from my heart to yours. Love you and see you next time. Bye.